All right, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be working through the practice problems for AP Pre-Calc Test 1. And then it's got a disclaimer on it. This is, you know, although this is a set of review problems, this is not the review like you might have been used to in, in an earlier class. So um, all the questions here represent topics that are on the exam, but I'm not guaranteeing that all the topics on the exam are covered on this practice, right? Okay, the quizzes are where you need to go for that, for that comprehensive review. All right, so I think that's enough uh, disclaimer. Let's get to it. So the graph of the function f is shown here. Over which of the following intervals is f increasing? Okay, so that's from fair. It starts you off the relatively easy one. But this is from AP Classrooms, so it's like you know, the type of question they might ask you. So we're going to be looking for where, as I move left to right, the graph is going uphill. So that's going to be here and also there. Okay, so that's from negative 6 to negative 4, and also from 2 to 5. Okay, so there it is. Okay. All right, number 2. The average rate of change of the function g on the interval negative 1 to 3 is negative. Okay, so we're going to need to translate that, right? We're going to need to say, all right, what does that actually mean? That's going to be, where's my highlighter? That's it? Okay. Um, when they say rate of change is negative, what that really means is that the function is decreasing. Okay, so I'm going to say g is decreasing. And specifically, I would say on the open interval negative 1 to 3. Okay, so we need to be decreasing the whole time. And hold on just a second. I'm not seeing that happen. Negative 1 to 3. Oh, yeah, I am seeing it. Okay, it's over here. It's just above the x-axis. I guess I was expecting it to be below the x-axis because of the way the ones on the left went. Um, okay, this one's only decreasing from it looks like about 0 to 3. Okay, but this one starts decreasing at negative 1. Okay, so that one's decreasing negative 1 to 3. Cool. All right, number 3. The graph here represents the percentage charge C on a phone battery over a period of time in hours. Based on the graph, which statements are accurate. All right, so the function is sometimes decreasing and sometimes increasing. No, it's always increasing. It's just like through here, it's not decreasing all that much. Maybe that was a time when the person was, I don't know, in class and not using their phone or, or something, you know, reasonable like that. So this one's out because, because of sometimes increasing. Uh, but again, here, it's not a, never increasing. Function's always decreasing, okay? As time increases, the charge of the battery is always decreasing. That's true, okay? So but that's the same statement. The charge is decreasing at the same rate at all times. Um, I disagree. Um, okay, it's smiling through here, but then the graph starts frowning. So that means there's a point of inflection. So there's got to be some change in the rate of change, right? If the rate of change is going from increasing to decreasing, which is what we're seeing at a point of inflection, where the graph changes from smiling to frowning, there's change in the rate of change. So um, at different rates at different times, that's more like it. Same rate at all times, definitely not. Okay, so that one I think we needed to do with process of elimination. I don't really see how else we would have worked that problem. But that's the case sometimes for multiple choice. Sometimes we just need to eliminate the wrong answer choices to eliminate the right choice. So here's the graph of function f. What is the average rate of change of f on the net interval negative 3 to 3 if it exists? Okay, well, it does. Because f of negative 3 and f of 3 both exist. And now I, I think we might need to go and look at the... AP Precal course description and make sure that there's not any sort of uh, disclaimer about when the average rate of change is undefined, but uh, I'm certain that if the function's continuous on a given interval, then we're going to be able to compute the average rate of change. So, all right. Uh, oh, yeah, so f of 3 is 3, f of negative 3 is 3. So I'm going to get 0 in the numerator, 6 in the denominator, and 0 divided by 6 is 0. Now, uh, actually, I am going to bring that up, and, and we're going to make sure. All right, so here we are. We're on topic 1.2, rates of change. It says the average rate of change of a function over an interval of the function's domain is the constant rate of change that yields the same. Oh, my goodness. That's it's the ratio of the change in output to the change in input over that interval. Um, 
the only thing that I'm seeing is that it, the values need to be in the function's domain. I don't even see that they're saying the function needs to be continuous or anything. So or there's not going to be any undefined average rate of change in this course, it looks like. All right, back to the problem set now. For looking at this table, which gives values for the function f at selected values of x, which of these conclusions with reason is consistent with the values in the table? That, I think that one might have gotten bounced to the personal progress check because of the wording in the question. That was a little clunky, but it's all right. We know what they mean. Um, the graph of f is concave up. The graph of f is concave up. Okay, so we're dealing, the statements are talking about the concavity. So what we're going to need to do is kind of analyze first the x's. They are evenly spaced. They're spaced out by one. And so now we're going to find um, kind of the first order difference and second order difference. So negative 17 to negative 27 is a change of negative 10. And then negative 27 to thir negative 39, that's a change of negative 12. All right? Negative 39 to negative 49 would be negative 10. And then to go from 49 to 53, I'd have to decrease by four more. Okay, negative 53 to negative 69, that's negative 16. And that's going to be negative 18. Okay, so the first order differences are all negative. That tells me that the function is decreasing. Okay, but it doesn't tell me anything about the concavity because the concavity is based on is the rate of change increasing or decreasing. But then I look at it and I see, okay, well, negative 10 to negative 12. Subtracted 2, subtracted 2, subtracted 2, subtracted 2. All right, since these x's are equally spaced and I'm seeing a constant second order difference, I would be able to conclude that this, um, this function is a quadratic. It's, it's a quadratic function, right? We've got a constant second order difference. So, um, yeah, I don't think that's what they're going to ask us. We can all say it's decreasing at a decreasing rate. Um, so... So over here we see, see that the rate is negative, which means f is decreasing. Okay. And then in blue, we're seeing that the rate is decreasing, which means that f is concave down. All right, so concave down is lower, c and d. That's going to be average rate of change is decreasing. That's going to be d. That's what we're seeing here. Uh, we could also say the decreasing at a decreasing rate. I, there was a problem on the free response section of this problem set that asked where the function was decreasing and de decreasing rate. I had to take it off so I could fit something else. Um, but there we go. There's your daily dose of decreasing and decreasing rate. So where is the graph of f concave down? Okay, well, that would be any place when it was frowning. I think those eyes didn't come out that well, but um, I see it's frowning over here and kind of smiling in here. So I would look and see, you know, it's going to got to be starting at negative infinity and ending somewhere, I would say, uh, around there. Okay, so if I'm seeing like, you know, maybe negative three or negative two as an endpoint with negative infinity as the left endpoint, I would be happy with that. Okay, yeah, negative two, there it is. So negative infinity to negative two, we are frowning. Sure, that, that seems believable that we would be frowning all the way until that point. Uh, we can't, we don't really have the tools to determine where the point of inflection is. We're just kind of like looking at it and giving it our best guess. But in multiple choice, they won't give you like, you know, they won't make you choose between negative infinity to negative two and negative infinity to negative three. Right? You, you can't really tell. Um, so just choose that one and move on. All right, number seven. The graph of the function f and the point labeled a on the graph are shown. Which of the function, which of the following statements about the graph of f at point A is true? All right. Oh man, that's uh, talking about the concavity of this thing. It's a little tough. We're gonna have to zoom in, for sure. But even still, okay, we can definitely say that the average rate of change of f is positive, right? Because as we move through here, okay, the graph is going uphill. So f is increasing at x equals a, and so we would say the rate of change is positive. So we're going to get rid of these answer choices. Now we're going to have to determine the concavity. Now, while it's not entirely obvious at this point, I don't think, I would really have preferred if they had placed a, I don't know, like right here, that would be much more obvious, okay? But they didn't. Now, they also did not place a here. Okay, so although I can't really tell if this is necessarily before or after the point of inflection, I've got to kind of think it is. 
um, because it's much closer to the maximum. So I'm going to assume that we are in an interval of frowning through here. So I'm going to say that A is concave down. Uh, but what I will tell you is if you're going to be asked that question on the test, it's going to be a lot more obvious. So we're saying average rate of change, or the rate of change of f is positive and f is concave down, best I can tell. All right, so, oh wow. All right, so this one's going to require a calculator. I can just see based on the numbers in that function. That's pretty ugly. So uh, I'm going to read the question, figure out what we need to do, then I'll pull up the calculator. So. We've got a new special attraction at a museum. Oh, I do not like this problem. But, you know, I put it on the practice set because sometimes it's not about what I like and don't like. I just need you to be aware of what's out there in AP Classroom. Okay? Uh, this is a calculus problem. Okay? They, it was, I have my own terminology for what this is, but um, I'm not going to share it on this video. Um, M is the number of people that visited each day. And then they also calculated the rate of change of the number of people visiting the attraction, also known as the derivative, which is calculus. They created a function model r for the rate of change in people per day each day after the attraction opened. r is given by r of d equals this crazy function. At which of the following values does the graph of m have a point of inflection? Okay. This is a calculus question. If you're not liking this one, don't worry. There's nothing like this on the test. Um, but, you know, I figured I'd bring all of the relevant questions in so that, you know, if you were trying to be a conscientious student and knock out all the problems that we assigned over the course of the year so you were maximally prepared for the AP exam, well, then you would have seen this. Okay, so M is going to have a point of inflection when M goes concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up. Okay, now I'm going to remind you that concave up is when the rate is increasing. So we would go from the function r increasing to the function r decreasing. Or if we were changing from down, concave down to concave up, uh, we would be seeing r going from decreasing to increasing. So really what we're doing is we're looking for a maximum or a minimum on the graph of r because r is the rate of change. And so this one is, this is really putting it all together. Or you could say engaging in some calculus, but either way, we're going to be able to solve. All right, so there you go. So I have copied in the function into y1. That took a long time to type in. And, but I'm also going to look at the answer choices to help like guide the, um, guide the window. So it asks that which of the following values of D, which is the input value. Okay, so I'm going to be manipulating X here. Um, and the lowest value in the answer choices I see is 3.894. So I'm going to set my window to start at X equals three and then end at, I see 13.728. So I'm going to go up to 15. And now scale of one, sure. Um, I'm going to need y to go probably from negative 10 to 10 just to be safe. Okay, there we go. That's, I saw a maximum. I just saw a minimum. And I've seen a maximum. So I'm looking for three places, and there's only one answer choice that's got three places. You know, if you just want to be certain that you've done it right, what we can do is we can calculate, um, let's say, a maximum. Um, looks like it's happening between 3 and 5. And we're seeing 3.894. Okay, that's a good sign. Okay, maybe we can find the minimum. Let's see, it's three, and that's happening between, well, probably five. Eleven, I think I did some counting. Yeah, great. Minimum's definitely in between there. And I get 8.627, and now I know it's going to be answer choice D, but if I just have to be certain, I'm going to compute this maximum between 11 and 15. But I think and get 13.728. So I'm now confidently choosing uh, these values because those are the extrema on the graph of R. All right, now the last problem is kind of a free response situation and it's uh, you know, going to require a calculator, and we're going to round our answers to three decimal places, as always. Or truncate, doesn't matter. 
All right, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to type in F, but you don't need to watch me do that. Okay, so we've got that entered in. I might make sure 2.53, negative 2.6, 5.1, and 5.6. Okay, so now we're going to look for the coordinates of the local extrema of F. And so we're just going to graph this on the standard window and, and hope for the best. But if it we can't see everything, one, two, okay, yeah. Okay, and so what we're going to do is, I don't think there's an extremum there. I think that's just a point of inflection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate a minimum, because that's the only thing I can see. Um, that No, wait, that's not a right bound. Calculate a minimum. Left bound would be zero. Right bound, we can just kind of scroll until we go path. Well, that's definitely to the right of the minimum. Got a little carried away. And I get that we have a local minimum at x equals 0 0.739. I don't see any other extrema. I don't see any maxima. Um, and if there was a maximum over here, there would also be a minimum, but I'm pretty confident. I think I looked at this on Desmos before I you know, copied the problem in from AP Classroom and saw that it was just point of inflection. So, uh, but what we could test, we, I, I'm showing you, but you could test that if you calculated the maximum on the interval, like, uh, let's see, even that would be risky. I'm going to try to do it on a, on a narrow interval. Um, and the left edge was negative 1.6 something. And if it just gives me the left edge, you wish it did, then that means there was no other relative maximum there, I think. Um, I would need to be pretty close to that, to what you would think would be the minimum. Uh, but you could just take it on faith. Also, that's another one that thinks that the maximum and minimum will be very obvious on the equivalent question on the test. All right, finding the zeros. Let's keep looking. Calculate a zero. Um, looks like it's between negative two and negative one. And yeah, that zero is at x equals negative 1.6. And also at somewhere between positive 1 and positive 2. So I'm going to calculate a 0. Left bound is going to be x equals 1. Right bound is x equals 2. And x equals 1.4. Okay, find the value of f of 1. We can calculate the value. Okay, that's something that we have not needed to do. Uh, we could plug in one and get it that way, uh, negative 7.8. I'm going to show you a couple of other ways we can find that. Okay, we can also, I think we can press trace and type in x equals 1. Yeah, and it'll give us that, that same y coordinate there. We can also quit out to the main menu and call on y1, which is going to be something more useful when we go to um, compute an average rate of change. But we can do that, and I will get negative 7.8. And I don't know how I miss that every time. Um, let's make sure. Yep, yeah, sure enough. Um, x equals 1, y equals negative 7.8. Right, well, at least I caught it. I had to do it three different times to catch it. But. All right, find the solutions to the equation f of x equals 6. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to graph f, we're going to graph 6 on the same window, and we're going to find where they intersect. Okay, so I'm going to calculate the intersection between blue and red. Give it a guess. And they will get x equals negative 1.877, or negative 1.876 if you would prefer to truncate. But then there's another one intersecting blue and red. Looks like it's around x equals positive 2. And there we go, 1.553. On what intervals is f decreasing? Well, f is decreasing all the way through here until it hits its minimum. Now you might argue that if it was like momentarily horizontal there, it wasn't decreasing. Uh, but we're going to say that as we move left to right, the graph continually goes down. Um, so a greater x gives you a lesser y. It is decreasing through there. Uh, and if you need more discussion on that, just come talk to me or something. 
Um, but I'm going to say for all x less than the x coordinate of the relative minimum, which we already found. So f is going to be decreasing when x is less than 0 0.739, the x coordinate of that local minimum, which we already found. All right, now it's telling us the points of inflection on the graph of f are at negative 0 0.813, and x equals positive oh okay i was like how is that happening it looks like it's smiling all the way on the right but it is uh, it's just it was frowning there in the middle a little bit um, and i can't draw on this calculator screen but um well maybe i think i can um I can draw my okay that was a really rough sketch it might not even be a function on the left edge but no, you see what i'm saying um it goes smiling to frowning to smiling and so these inflection points that they're talking about are here, negative 0.8, and there, positive 0.2. All right, so on what intervals is f concave down? Well, that's where the frowning is between the two points of inflection, so that's going to be negative 0 0.813 up to 0 0.213. On what intervals is the rate of change of f increasing? We have to translate that. There hasn't been a whole lot of that on this review. Um, and I thought I figured that was all right because we got you know a lot of um, you know, a lot of practice on that throughout the unit. So we're going to go back over here. Rate of change of f is increasing. We're going to change that to f is concave up. So I just said that it was concave down in that center region, so it's going to be concave up on the outer regions because the graph is smiling over there. So that's when x is less than negative 0 0.813 and also when x is greater than 0 0.213. Okay. What is the average rate of change of f on the closed interval 1, negative 1 1.2 to 3.4? Well, we're going to have the calculator do that work for us. We're going to call in a fraction bar ask for y1 and I'm going to do and so but I always want to show the setup for my computations here if I'm going to do something on the calculator uh, so I'm going to say f of 3.4 minus f of negative 1.2 divided by 3.4 minus negative 1.2 okay so y1 of 3.4 minus y1 of negative 1.2 and if your computer if your calculator doesn't have the the f4 doesn't bring up y1 uh, you can come see me and i will show you how to access that from your calculator you have to go in here to the variables menu um, i'm not totally sure if you can see that oh yeah, yeah you can see my my cursor there okay um it's in there but i'm not going to go into that in this video because i surveyed the people in my sections and nobody had um actually no um, i'm going to do 3.4 minus negative 1.2 and notice how the minus and the negative are different on the ti-84 um that you need to be careful on that if this kicks you back in error it's because you use the wrong minus sign for the negative 1.2 or potentially for subtraction uh, but this one down here this is for negative numbers and this is for subtraction i don't understand why they're different but i'm not a computer scientist so 87.44 Okay, it's the average rate of change of f on that closed interval. And then when is f negative? Well, we're just going to go back to the graph and, and let that uh, help us decide. Okay, it's negative down here where the y coordinates are negative between the two zeros. And we already found those zeros, so I'm just going to go and grab those. Where was it? Zeros is negative 1.6 and 1.4. So f is less than zero. The y coordinate is negative when x is between negative 1.6 and 1.4. And there we have it. That's all the practice problems for, for this review set. Um, what I'm telling you though is if you feel like you need more or you want to continue practicing, you need to go back to the quizzes. Okay, we made the quiz scramble for you in the first unit, uh, but from here on out, you're going to need to do that yourself. Uh, you're going to need to go and we've posted the quizzes to the to the websites and you know you can download them and print them out if you want, but you don't need to print them. Uh, you can just use a scratch sheet of paper and, and work them and then look at the key and check your own work um, based on that. So that's going to be all for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you need more, come see me, email me or your pre-cal teacher and, and we'll get you set up.